Okay, so here's an example of how to use the distance formula. Here is the distance formula, and you can see the distance between point P1 and P2 is equal to the square root of this quantity. And the quantity is found by taking the first, um, the x values of each point, x sub 2 take away x sub 1 squared, plus y sub 2 take away y sub 1 squared, Add those two quantities together and take the square root of them. You have the distance between two points. Let me show you how to do that. All right, so if you have the two points, I like to identify what I'm going to use for the x's and y's. So the first point I label x sub 1, y sub 1. The second point I label x sub 2, y sub 2. Now, it's easy to use the formula by just replacing my substituted values into the formula. So my first step is to set up the formula with no numbers in it and get ready to do some figuring. All right, I have to do x sub 2 take away x sub 1. x sub 2, negative 4, take away x sub 1, negative 2. Next point. I have to take y sub 2, take away y sub 1. Where's y sub 2? Right there. 3, take away y sub 1, negative 1. Now, I hope you see double negatives here. That means I have a positive. So let's figure out this parenthesis here. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 squared. Let's figure out this one. Negative 3 minus a negative 1 means 3 plus 1. That would be 4 squared. And both of these values, again, are under the square root symbol. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 16. Again, we're still under the radical symbol. Add those together, I get 20. Now, if you do this on your calculator, you get a decimal, and hopefully you realize I don't want a decimal answer, so you have to simplify the 20 another way. So, simplifying the root 20. Again, break it up into perfect square numbers if you can. 20 could be broken up to 4 times 5, which could be written as square root of 4 times square root of 5. Do I know the square root of 4? Oh yeah, that's 2. So 2 root 5 is the best answer for that problem. When you get radical 20, don't forget, you need to simplify it. And I don't want decimals. So, there you go. Okay, let's show an example of how to use the midpoint formula. Here is the formula. The midpoint is equal to an ordered pair, two points, and you find that special ordered pair that's exactly between the two given points by using this formula, which states x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2 gives you 1 point. y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2 gives you the second point, or the y value in the ordered pair. So let's see how that works when we have an ordered pair. So here's the ordered pair. Again, I like to identify my x1s and y1s. So I'm going to go to my first ordered pair and call that x sub 1 y sub 1. And my second ordered pair, x sub 2, y sub 2. Notice that in the first ordered pair, both the x and the y value have sub 1s, and in the second one, they have sub 2s. If I happen to have a third one, I might put sub 3s for that. Okay, so let's try and use the midpoint formula. So the midpoint is some ordered pair, Let's get it ready with the fraction bar and the 2. Now I have to add the two points, x sub 1 and x sub 2. So I go back here and look, what did I say x1 was? 4 plus 3. Okay, my y sub 1 was negative 6 plus y sub 2, which was negative 2. Now I'm going to simplify this a little bit. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 over 2 is the first point. Negative 6 plus negative 2 is negative 8. Divided by 2 is negative 4. So the ordered pair of the midpoint is 7 halves negative 4. 
All right, here's a problem that you have to use the midpoint formula to solve, but they don't ask you quite to find the midpoint. Um, find the coordinate of Q given that M is the midpoint of PQ. So they give you P, they give you M, but they don't give you Q. A visual of what's going on is something like this. I have a point P. They give me point M, and they want me to find point Q. Now, you can use what you know about the midpoint formula. Now, remember that the midpoint formula is this. You add the x1 plus the x2, divide it by 2, and you add the y1 plus the y2, and divide it by 2. But here, they give me the point P which is negative 6, 2. They give me point M, which is negative 1, 1. They don't give me point Q. So I'm going to call that just X and Y. Now, I can use the midpoint formula with the 6 and the X and set it up to the midpoint and be able to solve for the X and the Y in this problem. Okay. I know how to use the midpoint formula. So let's use it and see what we get here. Minus 6 plus x all over 2. That's what the midpoint is. What's the other part of it? The other part of the midpoint. How about 2 plus y over 2? There we have it, the ordered pair of the midpoint. They didn't ask me to find the midpoint, though. They asked me to find the point Q. That's a clue, though. This midpoint is a clue, and this midpoint here is already figured out. I know that it's minus 1, 1. I know that that's the midpoint. I know how to find the midpoint using the midpoint formula. But this doesn't look like negative 1, does it? That x is a problem. I wish I knew what it was. Did you know you could find it? Set this point that I don't know with the x in it equal to the negative 1 and solve it. And we will have that x part of the point q. So let's try that. Minus 6 plus x over 2 equals negative 1. Oh boy, fractions. A little tricky. Want to get rid of them? You know what to multiply by? 2. That's right. 2 on this side, but I have to also multiply 2 on this side. Nicely cancels out. No fractions. Easy to solve. Minus 6 plus x equals negative 2. Add 6 to both sides. x equals 4. What is x? x is the first point in the coordinate of q. So q is 4 and some point y. I need to figure that out. Got any thoughts? Hopefully you're thinking you can take this value and set it equal to negative 1 or 1. Which one? The y value here should equal the y value here. Let's try it. Okay. If you want, try it yourself. Pause the video, try it yourself, and then see if you get what I get. You ready for me to start? Okay, so I'm going to set this value, 2 plus y over 2 equal to 1. Again, messy fractions. Let's get rid of them. Multiply by 2. I have to multiply both sides of the equation by 2 so I don't change the value. Okay, 2 plus y equals 2, subtract 2, subtract 2. y equals, hey, 2 minus 2, that's not anything. Can I put a 0? Can 0 go in an ordered pair? Of course it can. Tried to trick you. All right, so the point Q, four, zero. That was easy.
get some of those on the homework. So good luck. I bet you can do them.